What do I think about Las Vegas? I think Sin City. Probably casinos and rolling the dice. <laughs>
the, the start list is a huge motivating factor for me. Like I, I choose races where I get to race the best guys in the world and to race Craig Alexander, Michael Raylert, the list is endless and to maybe possibly beat these guys is what you want to do. You don't want to race, win a world championship when no one's there. You want to race the best guys and you want to beat them on that day. Trying to take it all in and really appreciate the moment, not get caught up in it. And mainly just trying to keep the nerves at hand. I think uh, I get most nervous the 20 minutes before the start when, you know, the nervous energy, it's just bouncing off everyone and you can feel the tension. And so once that gun goes, I sort of feel a sense of relief and freedom and it all washes away and it's like I'm in the zone doing my thing and this is what I've trained and been here to do. I actually welcome suffering. I realize suffering is a part of growth. It's natural. It's something that we all go through. Um, and I think that's part of it. You know, embracing the suffering, willing to really test yourself, and willing to say, hey, no matter what happens, I'm going to accept it, and I'm going to keep pushing beyond, even though my body's telling me to quit. I like to think of myself as pretty lax, easy to get along with sort of person and that's until the gun goes off and then something happens <laughs> and then I'm an angry racer I guess. Um, you just want to race and you want to tear people's legs off and I guess that's what separates us um, as elite athletes is that we, we just love the, the thrill of competition. It's unbelievable. This is the only sport I know. You get to go out and race against world champions. For me, I really relish it. I relish the ability to go out here and measure myself against the best in the world. And I think when I look back on this 10 and 20 years and sit down with my kids, it will even take on a greater significance at that time. My mum used to always say before we were born that she wanted twins um, and my dad always said he wanted a Porsche so my mum was quite happy when she got twins and my dad's still waiting for that Porsche. I'm obviously the more attractive, intelligent, athletic and modest, modest one. Modest um, as well. And if she had got in first, she probably would have said exactly the same thing. In individual sports, yeah, we're normally competing against each other, which is hard at sometimes. I think one race we were doing, it was a, a running race, a 10k and around, around this lake. And I think I almost got whiplash because Burn was just behind me for the entire race. And I kept checking behind so many times that I think I finished with a bit of a sore neck at the end of the race. But the most important thing was I, I did beat her that day. So. When we initially uh, qualified last year, um, we were just excited about racing overseas, getting going on a holiday, enjoying the fact that, yeah, racing in an international race. But the biggest or scariest factor is how hot it is. We're coming from a Melbourne winter. We're sleeping in our rooms with 
aircon off and windows open to try to get used to it. But it's, um, yeah, we're just hoping we don't melt. There's definitely an inbuilt competitiveness and you always like to beat the other one, but overall we're generally supportive of each other so it's yeah an unwritten competitiveness more so than an overt one. I think if we got too competitive it, it wouldn't be fun so we keep it a bit light-hearted most of the time. I actually love this course here in Vegas. Um, I think it's a true championship course. Last year it was the first year event and I think we were pretty lucky at last year's event in that the weather was a little bit more mild, but the course itself, it's beautiful. The bike course is unreal here. It's just relentless hills and the winds can come howling down through the canyons. And um, I think it's a true test of both having fitness and tactics and 70.3 short course speed as well and uh, strength and power for sure. I always say I'm in it to win it. You know, my goal is to finish top 10%. But at the end of the day, it's really about testing myself. It's not about so much where I finish. It's about did I give it my all and did I race against the best of the best. And I always look to try to take something away from each race. And you really learn a lot about yourself competing in this type of environment. Pretty much in that first five miles of the bike, you know if you've got the right bike legs and you sort of go from there, whether it's going to be really fast or it's going to be a bit of a suffer fest. So I'm hoping I have good luck bike legs and I can push the pace and be there off the bike and then hopefully click in early on that run and, and just uh, go with the pace because it's uh, going to be fast. You know, I had a bit of a bad luck today. I got a flat tire pretty early on in the bike and just didn't have flat tire stuff with me, which uh, maybe was a little bit of a mistake and waited for some SAG support and uh, just decided to call it a day. You know, I was pretty much out of the race at that point and I've got Ironman Hawaii coming up. So I'm definitely going to come out and cheer on a lot of the competitors. A lot of my friends are racing as well and then uh, kick back, put my feet up and uh, maybe go for a swim. It's really amazing how how quickly the community comes together to clean up the mess that they leave, um, and it's not a mess in a negative sense. But it, it, and that's a, that's a testament to the organization of the event and how quickly it gets cleaned up. And Monday morning, you'll never know they were even here. The volunteers are what make this event. You've got the World Championship, and you've got those extreme conditions. People are going to be pretty 
pretty on edge, but uh, yeah, they do a fantastic job and we couldn't uh, race without them. To me, the, the best volunteers are the ones on the run course because that's where you really need their support. You need the, the cold drinks and the ice and the cola. The Coke is just the best. So the, the volunteers that hand out the Coke, I just want to give a big hug to. It's always the skinny, goofy looking people that you need to worry about because those people mentally are tougher, harder, and they fall in an uphill battle and willing to push beyond where other people are willing to quit. Pretty, uh, it's hard to explain, I guess. It's, it's addictive, I'll say that. Uh, yeah, once you win one, you want to win again and again, and that's what drives me in training, is to have that feeling, especially um, winning big races. So it's, yeah, I get chills down my spine. That's pretty much sums it up. It wasn't terrible, but it wasn't a great performance, so anyway, you live and learn. You know, there's not many sports where you can compete alongside your heroes or your idols or people that you really look up to. And I think that's the beauty of triathlon is it's uh, really grassroots. And at the end of the day, we all crossed the same finish line and we all got there from point A to point B. And so you can relate to each other and uh, sort of share a laugh and chuckle about uh, what you just went through. We've got some, some friends that have travelled all the way over from Australia who are going to be supporting us and uh, yeah, we want to look good for them so it would be nice not to be crawling across the uh, finish line and it would be really nice for me to beat you and vice versa. Yeah. I'm, sure, I'm sure an Aussie will win, I'm pretty confident. You know, it's weird. I'm one of these I never try to think about finishes. I always try to celebrate the journey. But for me, it's more about as I'm going through the race, just remembering how lucky I am. I always picture my kids and my wife. And that's the kind of stuff that just gets me through it. it just makes me realize how lucky I am to be out here.
Uh, we've been helping, this is our fourth race, and it's just, it's a great organization. It's so professionally run, and it's a great opportunity for our kids, not only to spend a couple days together and bond and have that time together, but us to help the community. I expect for um, us to have team bonding, go closer together before the season starts, make things better. Honestly, this makes me actually want to do one of these, not gonna lie. I don't get the feeling that it's thankless at all. I mean, I, I definitely think that they're all appreciated, that they're appreciated and that we, uh, they make us feel like they couldn't put the race on without us. But no, I think they, they do a great job of making the kids feel worthwhile and uh, very appreciated. I mean, the kids, I'm not gonna lie, their favorite part about the whole weekend is they get a free t-shirt. If you asked me to find a negative about the whole process, I really couldn't. I mean, I, I think that it's so well run and so simple uh, of a way to get kids and be involved in the community. So I think it just constantly spreads and spreads because of the success and um, because of the magnitude of the event.